In today's video, we're talking about extenders or converters and the pros and cons of using them. So let's look into this. I often get asked, it's one of the kind of common questions I get asked really is about converters and extenders because people know that sometimes I do shoot on one. Um, I've shot on one for about a year in quite a few different situations and scenarios. So I'm going to kind of give my feedback and my pros and cons of buying them and using them and whether or not you should kind of do the same. So let's dive into it. Pro number one. They increase the distance that you're shooting at in a pinch. So I have a 1.4 times teleconverter and I've used before because like I hired one first of all, I hired a two times teleconverter. Um, for me, the reason that I hired one and ended up buying one is because I didn't particularly need a three or a 400 mil prime lens at the time, but I did need to increase my range slightly for some uh, fixtures and matches and bookings that I had um, at the time. and. To increase that distance, to increase that range of my um, 7200, um, this was kind of like a really, really good investment. So uh, my 1.4 teleconverter takes my 200 mil to something like 340, 350 mils um, on the crop sensor and stuff. It's something like 380, I think. My math might not be right, but you do gain quite a bit. Um, and that is really useful you know if you don't want to lug a big three or 400 mil prime lens around like a converter or an extender is actually a pretty decent way to go because um it does give you that kind of distance pro number two is that they are therefore um, because they're a lot smaller uh, more than anything they are pretty cost effective a big three or 400 mil 2.8 prime lens is probably going to set you back even if you buy it second hand like a couple of grand that's an awful lot of money um, whereas i picked this 1.4 times uh teleconverter up um on ebay second hand i think i paid about 100 250 pound for it um it obviously was second hand i made sure it was pretty clean on both ends um, like I had a really really good look at it before I purchased it but like even if you buy them new I think they're only a couple hundred quid um, and I obviously went for the L series ones because I wanted it to work with my L series lenses that I have and um, so they are cost effective like the difference between 300 quid and three grand is remarkable and if you only want a little bit of distance and you don't want to stump down a lot of money like this isn't a bad way to go um, if you just kind of want to try it out, if you need something that's a little bit longer, like that's a pretty cost effective way to kind of get to that focal length that you want to get to. Pro number three is that they're far more portable than a three or a 400 mil or even bigger prime lens. Now, um, I haven't got a 300 mil or 400 prime lens myself, but I do know they're big. I do know they're heavy. Like I, I have experience with them. It's not like I have never ever held one or used one. I've just never had one of my own and the difference between like throwing this in a bag and like then putting a 300 into a bag is is remarkable and carrying this round is just a whole world of difference so like i can sling this in a pouch i've got a think tank pouch that i wear my belt and um, i can sling that in a pouch if i need to like even when i put it onto my camera system it's not a massive weight difference if i fly which i did so when i took this when i went to the world beach games in qatar last autumn and um, like throwing this into the bag like made no difference to the weight of the case but had i put a three or 400 mil lens in instead then i probably wouldn't have been able to get my case into the overhead locker because it had been a bit too heavy for the plane so it'd have had to have gone in the hold and then you start introducing lots of different kind of annoying variables so like they are way more portable than a massive big lens and um, so they are good in that respect however we, have, we do have some drawbacks. Con number one, they are not as nice as a proper super telephoto prime lens. Like I would love to sit here and say like, get one of these, it's a magic bullet. You don't need a three or 400 mil 2.8. They'll just do the difference. Like they're amazing. They're not as good as a proper prime lens. Like they just aren't. It's the equivalent of taking a photo that's super sharp and really really nice and cropping really really tight into it like it's okay and you can get away with it but it's not the same as having a 
telephoto lens that gets you to that distance in the first place. So like, whereas you might feel like these could be a magic bullet and really, really help you out, if you are looking for the same quality as a super telephoto 300, 400, even a 600 uh, mil prime lens, they're not the same. So like, you need to just be aware of that. I would love a 300 mil prime lens in the back. I don't have one currently, but this gets me out of a pinch in kind of the short term. But like, I know that this isn't as nice as kind of the genuine article. It's just the way it is. Con number two. The I found on the two, so I hired a two times teleconverter back in end of summer last year for um, some hockey stuff that I did because I wanted to try a teleconverter out. Um, and then obviously I've bought this one as well. They, I found on both of those that the focus is ever so slightly soft. Um, it's like shooting in a kind of a noisy uh, environment. Like they're just a little bit soft. They're not super tack, tack sharp all the way through the image like you'd expect it to be. Um, so like you are going through more layers of glass um, to get to the end of the lens. So it does soften it just ever so slightly. It's not the end of the world, like you can get away with it if you're just shooting local sports teams and kind of like local events, like it's not really going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, commercially, editorially, that's when it starts to kind of like fall down, I found this. Um, but like I've shot some really good stuff using a teleconverter and the focus is a little soft but it's not too bad. But I wouldn't want to rely on it all the time because like I say, that focus is a touch on the soft side. And finally, con number three is with a standard prime 2.8 lens, be it three, four, or 600 mil or 500 mil, depends what you go for, um, the, you're not losing stops of light. It's 2.8 like for the duration of that lens. Like it, it's, it's 2.8 for that lens. That's what it is. Whereas if you add one of these on to a 70 to 200, for example, like I do 2.8, that then becomes F4. So you're losing a couple of stops of light, 2.8, one, two. Yeah, you're losing like three stops. Um, and that isn't necessarily the end of the world if you're shooting in the middle of the day in really, really good sunlight and you know you haven't got lighting issues. However, if you're starting to shoot in an evening or into nighttime and you're shooting under kind of like stadium lights or anything like that, losing a couple of stops of light actually then gets really, really difficult because you then start to trade off between your shutter speed, which you don't want to be too low because then you're going to get a bit of motion blur and you don't really want to ramp your ISO up too loud because it's then going to get that image quite noisy. So like it's a battle at that point. Um, obviously, if you go to like a two times teleconverter, I think it takes you from a 2.8 to 5.6. Don't quote me on that. I'm not great with my receptacles. Um, but you know, it's something to bear in mind. It's, you're not shooting at 2.8, you are shooting at f4 or 5.6. So, whereas a super telephoto lens will have you at 2.8 the whole time, you are going to lose stops of light. And like I say, if you're shooting daytime, like Sunday league football, you know, down the local park with your mates, then actually it's not going to make a huge deal of difference. However, if you are shooting commercially, editorially, you know, for agency, whatever, losing a couple of stops is going to start to make a difference, especially when the daylight goes and the stadium lights go up. So you need to kind of bear that stuff in mind. I think overall, I would say that they are a really good investment. Um, later next year, when I have a super telephoto in the bag, and it's a probably a 300 mil, I think, I think for the work that I do and stuff, a 300 is going to probably be the better option for me to go rather than 400. Um, I'll still keep this in the bag. Like I'm not gonna get rid of this because like they're actually pretty useful. But being professional, being like a commercial photographer, you know, now working for agency, which I've started doing, like it's just not as reliable as it could be if I had a dedicated super telephoto lens. So like I say, if you're an amateur sports photographer or kind of like you're just starting out on getting the longer stuff, like a teleconverter is not a bad way to go. They're not particularly expensive in the grand scheme of things. They do increase your distance. But if you're really gonna be at that kind of like high end level and that high end of work, then probably a teleconverter is not the answer for you. So you need to kind of bear that stuff in mind. But if you, are watching this and you've got a teleconverter, whether it's a 1.4 or a 2, um, and you're, you know, you've had success with it or you've had bad times with it, you know, leave a comment uh, and stuff below because I'd be interested to see people's thoughts. Like I use mine a fair bit 
um, when I get a super telephoto probably in the next couple of months um, like obviously I won't use it a great deal but it will still be around um, so like I don't think they're bad pieces of kit I just don't think they're a magic bullet and I think if you're looking for you know getting to three four five hundred mil um, with your work a teleconfer is probably not the way to go if you're gonna want to do that week in week out hopefully you found that interesting like I say, if you've got any comments, leave them below um, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, yeah, have a great rest of the day. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you again, hopefully, back on the channel very, very soon.